Hello, my strong, strong friends, and welcome to my eight week strength and muscle building program, Uplifted. This program is made to help you grow. Let's get lifting and get uplifted. Gentlemen, when you think of an alpha male, you probably think of a dude who's big and strong. But in my opinion, a true alpha male is someone who also has the perfect balance of style and substance. Welcome to my 30 day ab program. There are a lot of familiar movements, but there are plenty of others that you probably haven't seen before. You now have everything you need to build that six pack you always wanted. Foundations of Fitness Nutrition is designed to be a comprehensive and applicable guide to help everyone make more educated choices about the food they eat. Hey everybody, this is Lawrence Ballinger, Team Bodybuilding.com and Team Muscle Tech Athlete. Today I'm going to lead you guys through one of my mass chest workouts. It's going to be super intense, pretty heavy at the beginning, and then we're going to rep some stuff out. So why don't you guys follow me along, and it's going to be a fun time. So first we're going to start off with incline bench press. This is literally one of my favorite movements. And we're going to do a few warm-up sets um, before we go too heavy. And then I also have bands as well to throw on this. Ooh. So when you guys start, make sure your seat's adjusted to the proper height. A little bit higher. There we go. So for me, I like coming down, pausing, and then coming back up. Nice easy set of 10. We'll wait a minute or two, slap on another plate, and we'll just keep slapping on plates as we go. Um, currently right now, I'm drinking some Amino Built by Muscle Tech. It kind of keeps me hydrated, keeps BCAs in me during my workout, and just kind of keeps me going. What is your favorite flavor of BCAAs? My favorite flavor is actually peach mango. It's something that's like my go-to, and that's actually what I'm drinking right now. Um, I don't know what you guys actually like to drink, during your workout, do you guys like caffeinated or uncaffeinated? Me personally, I don't like caffeine during my workout. Only like a pre-workout to kind of wake me up a little bit. Do you have any good exercises for your lower pecs? Ooh, yes. So for our lower pecs, we will be doing cable crossovers coming low. It really helps shape underneath your pec and really bring them out. Because you know you, you really need your lower pecs to show, especially when you got on a tank top and it's that summertime, you want to have like bro titties where it's just like, yeah. You can like just pop them. Anyway, <laughs> it's time to hit the next set. Oh, we're gonna need more plates. Oh. So we're gonna do another set of 10, nice and light. Let's get set up for the next one. YouTube wants to know, what is your daily nutrition like? So I'm 90% keto most of the year. And so I consume a lot of calories. I can have up to 6,000 to 7,000 calories for my maintenance. So I eat like for breakfast this morning, um, since I flew into Boise, it was 14 eggs, um, two egg whites, 17 bacon bat patties, and two cups of coffee. <laughs> but I'm cutting right now, so it's a little bit less than I normally eat. Poor you. I gotta eat. It's not hard being me. Alex on Facebook wants to know, do you prefer barbell training or dumbbell training? It depends on what I'm trying to do. I love barbell training just because the heavy compound lifts. Um, it engages more of 
your whole body versus just your pecs. Um, I like to use dumbbells more to shape my muscles and compounds just to put more thickness on. That's kind of why we're doing really heavy incline today. Make sure when you guys are wearing that V-neck or tank top this summer, it really shows all that upper pectoral thickness that you build up. Whew. All right. Actually, I want to put on wrist straps. Yes, I use wrist straps every once in a while. I'm getting old, guys, so got to protect my joints. Do you use wrist straps for both barbell and dumbbell training? Um, only barbell. Just because I usually go a lot heavier. They usually don't make dumbbells in most gyms that are heavy enough to do like sets of three to five. So I used to work out a destination and we had dumbbells that went up to 250. So that's when I would use them. But I tore my pec doing that, so yeah. <laughs> How many times a week do you personally train your chest? I only train my chest once a week. I feel like um, if you're training heavy, or you're training right, you probably only need to train the body part once a week. Um, but if you're really trying to grow that body part and your recovery is good and your nutrition is good, then you can train it twice. Three. Two. Let's go. Drive. typical cues you use they notice that you kept saying drive so when I'm going heavy um, I just like to focus on more about just pushing the weight instead of just squeezing the muscle because sometimes you're so focused on the contraction that you forget to actually push so my key word to tell myself is stop being a bitch and to drive <laughs> Tyler on YouTube wants to know what exercise did you tear your pec on and do you still do that exercise Yes, I do. <laughs> um, I tore my pec. So two years ago, I was doing a Special Olympics um, truck pull and we were pulling the semi truck. And then right after I pulled the semi truck, I went to do a video and I was repping out 200 pound dumbbells and tore my pec. So yeah, I still do dumbbells though. What songs do you normally listen to in the gym and do you have a playlist online? Yes. I do have a place on Spotify. Um, I'm pretty ratchet, to be honest with you. <laughs> I listen to 6 ix 9 Young Gotti, uh, Bad Bunny. Probably shouldn't say this, but I listen to Justin Bieber too, and Maroon 5. So if you check out my playlist, you're gonna find a lot of uh, random songs, but they will get you in the mood. Do you use a normal grip or a suicide grip? Um, I like a normal grip. Every once in a while I'll do a suicide grip just because it feels comfortable on my hands. Because sometimes from lifting so much you'll get cramps in your hands from doing like a heavy back day and a heavy shoulder day that you're not really able to grip the weight correctly. How did you get your maintenance calories up to 5,000 to 7,000? Um, <laughs> That's a great question. So I know I probably don't look like it, but I'm 6'1 and 255. Um, yeah, just being that large, you need a lot of calories. And then I work out heavy, really heavy. <laughs> Whew. Can I get a spot? It's just a quick little lift off. You can do it. Girls help me all the time. Come on. I might be a power lifter, but I'm not sure I can do you this. You are, come on, you are a boss. We're gonna work out together, new video. Let's go. Teambodybuilding.com all day. That's okay. Just don't let me die, right? I'm promising that. Well, if we die, you know how great this content will be? <laughs> go viral. My mom will love that. She's like, he's famous finally. One, two, three. Perfect. I'm good. 
blood vessel <laughs> if you do the healing process isn't that bad it just sounds like velcro literally i have it on video and it sounds just like this it's okay so stevens on facebook wants to know what is your cardio routine if you do any <laughs> um so i have a seven pound dog i walk him in the morning walk him at night voila <laughs> That's the honest truth, I'm so, so serious. If I'm not doing that, if you see me running, you should probably run with me because I'm running away from something. <laughs> Have you personally used a mass gainer and are they useful? Honestly, I think they are useful for certain people. So I was a very, very hard gainer and I didn't understand nutrition correctly and I had a very busy schedule. So mass gainers are good when you can't actually eat a meal or if it just seems almost impossible for you to gain the extra weight. I know um, back when I was like 15, 16, I was like 120 pounds. I just couldn't keep food down. So I started taking mass gainers. I was taking two, uh, two shakes a day and it was like an extra 2000 calories. And it helped me start packing on weight so I could be competitive in my sports. What made you get into keto? Um, actually, you guys have actually probably seen him on bodybuilding.com before. His name's Dr. Jacob Wilson and Ryan Laurie, um, and actually Sean Wells as well. They all talked me into going into keto. And I wasn't too sure about it, but then they were like, well, you can have as much bacon as you want and as much steak as you want. I was like, okay, I'll try it. We'll give it a shot. And the first two weeks, I'm not gonna lie to you, the keto, keto uh, advertation phase, horrible. I mean, that shit sucks. You can get a keto flu, um, you're dehydrated, your strength goes down. But once you get advocated to the actual ketosis uh, or, and actually get into ketosis, it's great. Your strength goes back up, you stay lean all year long, you still make uh, great physical gains, and it's easy to travel with or go out and see your friends. Because you're still able to eat burgers, you're still able to go to an event, just have to watch the sauces that you use and just no bread and then you're still able to have like mayonnaise, fats, butters, and things of that nature. How much rest do you put in between the different sets? Um, between my heavy sets, it's two to three minutes. Um, between the light sets, it's usually about 45 seconds. Yep, it's about that time. And YouTube wants to know, do you prefer lightweight, more reps, or high weight, low reps? I like to actually mix them both up. So I like to start off heavy and, oops, sorry, you guys probably couldn't even hear that. <laughs> I like to start off heavy and then um, bang out some weights and then go into my light phase where I'm actually trying to catch a pump. So I'm like right in between a power lifter and a bodybuilder or a strength training athlete and a bodybuilder. Because why be big if you're not strong, correct? All right, hopefully that statement doesn't fail and I don't kill myself. Ooh, this bar is slippery. What you guys use, Astroglide on this? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Three, two, two one. Drive! I'm good. All right, guys, when well, you guys are lifting heavy, um, get a bench that's like bolted down because we could have flipped over. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go a little bit lighter. Oh shit, that was heavy. Question from Twitch. If I don't feel sore after a workout, did I do something wrong? No, you just didn't lift intensely enough. So you didn't do something wrong, you are still a new lifter and you don't understand intensity correctly. You don't understand your body correctly. You should always be sore because that soreness shows that you actually broke down the muscle fibers and actually did some work. Whew. How and why did you get into the fitness industry? 
Um, that's actually a great thing. I got done playing college football and I didn't know what else to do. So a friend of mine at the time talked me into doing a spokesmodel contest for bodybuilding.com. I was like, there's no way that I'll actually make it. So I ate, like I normally do, 14 donuts, and I took a photo. Um, somehow they actually picked me. I have no clue and no reason why. So I flew out to Boise. Oh shit, this is not gonna work. Nope. Okay, no bands today, but this is a great workout if we could use bands. The bench doesn't hold enough tension. There needs to be like a bar down here because this tension is only gonna be like 50 pounds and I like to be at like 150. Oh, fuck it, we can do 50 pounds of tension, I'll be fine. Um, slap on more weight, right? So, yeah, they picked me and I was like, oh. Um, I dieted for two weeks, had no clue what I was doing, and once I realized that it was fun, and I placed second in it, I was like, okay, maybe I'll give this a try. And everybody at Bodybone.com was super cool and helped me throughout the journey. How come you do incline bench over flat bench? Um, actually, we're going to do flat bench a little bit later, but I like to start with incline just because most people are weak at it. Um, upper pec is really neglected inside of most people's chest training, so they never really get upper pec like definition or growth. Does my back need to be on the bench the entire time through an incline bench press? It can have a natural arch in your back, so that's fine, but I like to keep uh, your back pretty much flat against it, shoulder blades pinched together, elbows in, and staying very tight and compressed. And YouTube wants to know, is reverse bench press good, as in the decline bench, and do you ever incorporate it? Is reverse bench press good? Um, I don't personally implement it just because I have a lot of under titty, so I don't use it. Uh, <laughs> Hey, everybody understands what under titty is. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> but no, I don't personally do it. Um, just because it's such a short range of motion that I think it's partially useless, I just rather do cables and do cable flies at a low angle. All right. Actually, we're good with this. Shouldn't be too heavy. If I die with this, I deserve it. would do more reps but it's taking a little bit longer than I expected so let's go hit some flat bench Whew. wait I don't have to re-rack this I have a crew <laughs> for the bands people just want to know how did you set up the bands okay. and create that so these bands you guys can actually get on bodybuilding.com they're made by GoFit they're pretty cheap um, they're really hard to untake once you tie them together, but just create a loop and they tie perfectly together. You set the tie part underneath the bar and just make sure it's right in the middle. And then you just put both ends together. They have different, um, basically resistance. This one's 150 pound resistance. I like that just because it's heavy as fuck and I don't like doing things light. So I'm a very big advocate as going as heavy and as hard as you possibly can. Don't hold anything back for the next exercise. All right, I got a crew. Come with me. Shit, let's go. <laughs> oh, and you guys pan with me too? This is nice. I need you guys at home with me. All right. Ooh, this is gonna be fun. Flat bench, um, we're gonna superset this with champagne. And that's just, oh, I need dumbbells. Oh, they're sitting right by you. Yes. It's the best when you have a lovely assistant that comes and helps you too. 
I feel so bad though. Can I get a dude assistant so I don't feel bad when they're carrying my weights? <laughs> I feel so sexist now. <laughs> I feel like I'm not being a gentleman. Yeah, but I don't feel like a gentleman. I feel like an ass. All right. Hat time. Bodybuilding.com gear. Okay. So back to being serious, guys. Um, I always do like one or two warm-up sets just to get a stretch in the muscle group one more time. So we're going to do three sets of 10 and then superset it with champagnes for three sets of 10. Oh, boy. Whoa. Bar is high. Three, two, one. YouTube wants to know, did you take a pre-workout this morning? Oh yeah. I took Nitrotex, uh, or Nitrotex. I took <laughs> MuscleTex pre-built, and holy shit, I'm awake and sweaty as shit. Oh. Have you guys ever seen that meme where the little kid's like, and the mom's like, oh, are you hot? And he's like, yeah. She's like, where are you hot? Um, everywhere. Are you sweaty? Yeah, I'm sweaty from my ass and my butt crack and my balls. <laughs> That's the exact how I feel right now. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I told you guys you never put me on Facebook Live. Transitioning from that. <laughs> do you look for any particular ingredients in your pre-workout? Yes. I look for um, a nice caffeine amount. Nothing more than like 300 milligrams some beta alanine, some citrulline. Um, I like to add in some Hydromax sometimes, uh, or glycerol, or that's basically glycerol. And that's really about it. Just a nice pump factor and caffeine. Anything that increases my NO3. We good? Let's bang this out again. Who's your daddy? One, two, three. Do you have any must-have supplements as somebody who follows keto? Um, I definitely think you must have creatine, for sure, um, especially if you're not eating enough beef. Second, um, BCAs in between your workouts and in between your meals is a must-have, just so it keeps you in uh, muscle protein synthesis, as well as having a whey protein shake. Whew. I do four scoops for every protein shake though, so. <laughs> Just use the whole tub. <laughs> Do you hold an IFBB Pro Card? No. Um, I haven't really competed much, just because the weight category for a classic 
is a little bit difficult for me to get down to. Um, I'm using around 270, so getting down to 230 is pretty hard for me to do. But yet, I don't want to be a bodybuilder either because that's too big. So, yeah, I'm kind of like that weird stage. Do you have any other hobbies besides bodybuilding? Yes, um, I love golfing. And believe it or not, I love fashion. I love getting dressed up and, yeah, looking pretty. Uh, well, not dressing pretty. This is not pretty. Uh, <laughs> and besides that, I love going to music festivals and hanging out, partying a ton and dancing, especially salsa. <laughs> you guys would probably always catch me in Chicago sweating it up somewhere. Do you have a favorite cheat meal and is it keto? No, my, <laughs> cheeto, my cheat meals are not keto. Um, so usually I get a full deep dish pizza, um, a pack of 14 donuts from Stan's Donuts, um, two boxes of Pop-Tarts, a box of Frosted Flakes, and gummy bears, gummy worms, and then, yeah, that's using my cheat meal. Uh, that's a cheat day. Uh, that's a okay. cheat meal. How many <laughs> grams of protein do you follow in your keto day? Um, on my keto day, I have roughly 400 grams of protein, 500 grams of fat, and 100 grams of carbs. Do you focus on vegetable intake as a keto? Yes, um, but I'm a savage when I eat my vegetables. I literally get the big tub of like spinach, and I just grab it, just rah, rah, and just go for it, because I don't enjoy it. So, choo choo, swallow, done. All right, next set. Okay, we'll cross over, let's do this. All right. Ooh. Facebook wants to know, do you ever focus on time under tension and doing tempo reps? Yes, um, so I periodize my workouts. Time under tension is usually the third week of the month. Um, it's really slow and controlled weight. And I'll usually go about 40%, but when I do that, I do blood flow restriction as well. Wait, I still got you guys unwrap the weights. Yes, gym rules don't apply to me. YouTube just wants to let you know that you can feed a small country with your diet. Oh, yeah, my food costs more than my rent, and I live in downtown. How did you grow your arms so big? Um, as a rookie, all I did was arms and chest. So <laughs> my arms blew up, and uh, none of the rest of my body did. So I actually don't do arms anymore. And now I do legs and back and I just stopped doing arms. That might be heavy. Quick change. Zoom out. Zoom. Fast facts. Donuts or pizza? Oh, pizza. All day, every day. Oh, shit. Oh. Okay, okay. We can do this. Remember, guys, 
learn to stretch and buy clothes that fit. Okay. Oh. All right, so now we're gonna go do cables, but we're gonna do it at three different angles. The first angle is up top, right hand above, left hand above, and then together, and that's one. We're gonna do 10 reps. So, let's get it going. One. Facebook wants to know, do you ever skip leg day? No. I, I used to, not gonna lie to you. I used to hate leg day. If you ask anybody that's known me from when I was a kid, I used to run away from leg day. But now my squats got back to being pretty good. I can squat 650 um, and I'm back to like normal. I tore my groin in May. So it's been a while like getting it back to normal. Peanut butter, avocado, or coconut oil? Um, for keto, it would be coconut oil, but what I actually like to eat is peanut butter. Chunky or smooth? Ooh. But the question is, are you eating it with fruit or on a sandwich? Fruit, smooth, sandwich, chunky. You can ask questions during this. This is just a pump. Pump is fun. Like Arnold, neck. Actually, I'm not gonna quote Arnold. <laughs> if the fly machine is taken, do you have a great substitute exercise? Yes, use a pec deck, and you can do this exact same thing. What's the difference between full or half reps? Um, full reps just get more of a stretch. Half reps definitely actually have their place inside of a a workout routine. I never knock half reps just because you're still putting stress on the muscle. It's just, when are you doing it? I think half reps are great for the last few reps if you have a spotter or at the end of a workout. Do you take creatine daily or do you cycle off? I take creatine daily. I don't think there's a reason to actually cycle off just because your body naturally produces uh, creatine. Um, and then you don't have to go back through a loading phase and your body gets used to actually having creatine. I think it's the same concept of taking off time off of protein. There's really no reason to cut back on your protein either. How many cheat meals do you have in a week? You guys want the on honest answer or the one uh, <laughs> that I should be telling you? Honestly, I probably have three. And my cheat meals are huge. Uh, <laughs> my cheat meals usually or most people cheat days. But, you know, whatever works for you. Me personally, I can go with about three cheat meals a week and stay in keto. Um, I use the ketosis blower, and that shows me when I'm in and out of keto. Have you ever done the 10,000 calorie challenge, or is that not really a challenge? That's not a challenge. After this, I'll show you guys like a smash a five pound burger in under 17 minutes with two beers. We will be getting that on video. Do you prefer cable flies or dumbbell flies? I like cable flies just because it keeps the tension on your pec the whole time. You don't have to think about it. Versus dumbbells, you have to focus on keep, keeping the tension. Do you always drink BCAAs or do you just drink water? Sometimes I can't handle the flavor of BCAs is a little bit too much. Um, so I will drink water in the interim or um, unflavored BCAs sometimes, even though they taste like burnt rubber. How many exercises do you incorporate in your typical chest workout? Oh, that's a 
horrible question. Uh, <laughs> I can use anywhere between five exercises up to 20, depending on really what I'm working on and working for that day. So um, if it's a heavy lift and I'm just trying to build up strength, it's usually three to four exercises. But if I'm working on shaping, it could be up to 15, maybe 20 different exercises to make sure I'm hitting all the angles, pulling out striations. And if I'm getting ready for a photo shoot or show, then that's a lot more. YouTube asks, since you've had so many muscle tears, what have you learned about avoiding injuries? Warm up correctly is definitely one of them. Listen to your body. Um, when I was younger, I was, a, well, I guess about pretty equivalent to me in the strength, but I thought I couldn't hurt myself. So I would do a lot in one day and want to give my body a chance to deload and give my central nervous system a t chance to heal. So now I take a week off basically and do light lifts. And actually I'm feeling a lot better, a lot less joint pain and yeah. Do you follow a program or is every week different? Every week's different just because I don't like routine. You get bored at the gym, especially I've been doing this for about 15 years now. After a while, it just gets boring. So you need to set new goals, have different exercises, different workouts every week to kind of keep this interesting if you're gonna make this a lifestyle. When you travel a lot, how do you incorporate gym time or do you just take the time off the gym? No, when I travel, it's always early in the morning. Um, I work a lot and then I like to do fitness things like this on the side. So my workouts are usually five o'clock in the morning when I travel and then, yeah, they're about an hour long. Facebook wants to know, what advice would you give somebody who is a hard gainer? If you're a hard gainer, I would just advise eating to the point where you feel like you're about to throw up three to four times a day. So trying to have a meal and a mass gaining shake. I know most people think they eat a lot, but if you have the money to go get a metabolic cart or go get your metabolic rate tested and see where your maintenance calories are, try to eat 3,000 calories more than that a day. Um, if you can't figure that out, they have calculators online. Bodybuilding.com actually has one on their site. And you can kind of calculate your maintenance calories and then go two, 3,000 calories above that with uh, mass gaining shakes. We just came out with a platinum mass gaining shake with Muscle Tech. Actually, it should be available on Bodybuilding.com really soon. Given your intake is so high, do you incorporate mass gainer shakes? Actually, I don't. Um, just because most mass gainers have a lot of carbs in them and I'm on keto most of the time, so I can't. Uh, so I drink heavy whipping cream by the, ooh, damn near about a gallon. So I use heavy whipping cream in all of my protein shakes. So I'll do four scoops of Nitro Tech with a cup of heavy whipping cream and water. Sounds delicious. Oh, it's amazing. Fat, well, protein is actually fat soluble, so it mixes up a lot better and it becomes um, a thicker, more satiable shake so you're not hungry right afterwards. YouTube wants to know, do you use drop sets in your programming? Yes. Um, if you guys check back on some of my earlier stuff, I do these things called cannonball sets. And actually, we will do one after this set of diamond push-ups. Yes, and you're gonna help me. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. Peculating pectorials. So we're gonna do three sets of 15 for this, and it's just underhand cables. Works on your upper pec and pulling out frustrations. But I'm so full right now, you probably can't even see the frustrations. And I went tanning. I know black people usually don't tan, but I like the beach. What advice would you give to somebody just starting keto? Um, if you're just starting keto, don't get discouraged if it takes you a while to get into ketosis. It takes up to 21 days, um, depending on your body fat, 
how fast you get rid of glycogen, um, how much fat you're actually taking, how much ketones are actually circulating through your body. So just be ready for that. Um, take extra caffeine just because it's going to take you a little bit to get into ketosis because most people are so used to burning carbs as an energy source. So switching over to fats can take a little bit of your body getting used to. Um, stay hydrated on keto as well. I drink probably two gallons of water just because ketosis kind of keeps you dehydrated from the meats that you're eating and your body doesn't retain as much glycogen, so you're not containing as much water either. What is the best piece of advice you would give your younger self? Um, don't listen to every big guy at the gym. That would be the best advice. When I first started off, they were like, oh, eat peanut butter and jelly. Eat four cups of rice, you'll get yoked. No, you won't. No, you won't. I was skinny fat. No. Nope. <laughs> so <laughs> do your research. Find some people, influencers, that have a great backing um, and show a track record of them progressing as well as their clients progressing. Or follow people that are actually medical experts like Dr. Jacob, jo Dr. Jim Stepani, um, that give you science-based knowledge versus just bro science. I'm not a fan of bro science at all. Who do you look up to in the industry? Oh, well, there's a few people. Um, I know you guys heard me talk about Dr. Jacob and Ryan Lowry, um, Jim Stepani, Chris Gethin. Uh, oh, how can I forget my, the first person I ever met in the fitness industry and that's been giving me advice the whole time is Michael Hearn. I gotta give a huge shout out to him. He's been uh, a big help on eating correctly and eating enough for my size, so yeah. Definitely gotta give him a shout out. lighting for that all right you know what we're gonna do cable flies on here and I'm gonna have you do cannonball sets for me is that cool you you'll find out in a second because <laughs> I'm gonna explain to you and you all at the same time You might cuss a lot during this. I'm gonna try to refrain from it because um, my mom sees this, she'll kill me. Uh, so we started a lightweight. We're gonna start at like 20 pounds. I'm gonna do 10 reps. We're gonna drop the pin. I'm gonna immediately do 10 reps. We're gonna go all the way till I can't do eight and restart and keep going until I can't do 20 for 10. Or the pump gets so bad that you vomit. Using a vomit on um, first off, my vomit is anabolic, so <laughs> I just spit out straight gains. So yeah, we start super light. And we drop it one plate every time. And we just keep going. Yeah, increase every time. We'll drop the pin. Jesus, so technical. We're meatheads, we don't think that technical. Oh yeah, look at the titty squeeze. Oh, it sounds creepy because I have like my morning voice still. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, ten. So we take it to 30 pounds, immediately go back after. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. I usually like to do this at the beginning of my workout to pre-exhaust if I'm not lifting heavy. But if you're lifting heavy, use it at the end of your workout for a hell of a finisher. Eight, nine. Yeah, real weight. 
two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. So the benefit of going light to heavy is just to see your power output and how much you really still have left in your system. Billy incorporates your slow twitch and fast twitch muscle fibers. Also, it gets the bitch out of you. Back to 20. And then we start over again. This set can take anywhere from three to seven minutes. I don't think I'm gonna go for seven minutes. Or even three minutes. This is great to do like on leg extensions, leg curls, any type of machine that you can just move the pin easily and have a partner do it for you. So all you have to do is focus on the movement. As many times as possible. Oh uh, yeah. There's really no set amount of times you have to do it. I'd like to do it at least two, but the more the better. Like on leg extensions and cable rolls, I usually go through the full stack two to three times before I start dropping on my power output. Okay, so usually after you go up two or three times and you're starting to get tired, we finish the last set up with the lightest weight for a set of 20 or 30 reps. Just so, cause I usually work out with a partner. So the next person can go before getting fully cold. Now, if we want to, we could do diamond push-ups, but we're not. So, that was the work. Actually, we will. Fuck it. <laughs> All right. What are your thoughts on calisthenics and CrossFit? Actually, I was totally against CrossFit until I tried it at the Bruce Strength with one of my friends, Jacob Harper, and I fell in love with it. I think it's a lot of technique. Um, so, if you find a CrossFit gym with the right coach, to stop you from getting injured. I love it. Calisthenics, I'm not flexible. I use a loofah stick to wash my back. So that's not for me, but if you can do it, much props to you. I think it's great. Have you always been physically fit and into sports? Um, I've always been into sports, but no, I have not always been physically fit. Um, when I was in high school, I was a walking dirty Q-tip. Big ass head, little ass skinny body. Um, actually, when I was 15, no, when I was, yeah, when I was 15, I was playing football and I thought it was the shit. Um, this girl walks up 
and I had a huge crush on her. She said she's coming to my cousin's house for Thanksgiving. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to impress the shit out of her. And <laughs> it didn't happen. We all go downstairs to his basement. He just has his new bench press and uh, had 50 pounds on it total. Not on each side, total. Everybody's doing for 20 or 30 reps. It comes to my turn. I'm like, all right. My big cousin, who I still talk to, he's an asshole sometimes. He unracks the weight over my chest. He's like, you ready? I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. He lets go. <clears throat> it hits me so hard in my chest, knocks the wind out of me. I couldn't get it up. And everybody's dying laughing. Um, to make matters worse, they go upstairs. They grab the girl I had the huge crush on. They had her do it, and she did it for like 20, 22 reps. I still remember it like it was yesterday. So <laughs> I didn't date her. Um, that didn't work out too well. But from that point on, I started researching and getting magazines and learning how to work out. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. I don't even know that was the question. That was just a traumatic story that just popped up in my head. <laughs> how long do your workouts typically take you? Um, like a chest workout, like a small body part, like chest or shoulders, it's about 45 minutes to an hour. But back and legs, it can be like an hour and a half, two hours. What is your typical post-workout meal as a keto since typically people have to do carbs? So right after my workout, it's always heavy whipping cream and a protein shake. Um, and then right after that, it's usually a three-pound ribeye um, that's cooked in butter. Um, and then on top of that, four cups of salad and uh, four tablespoons of coconut oil. What else do I usually have? Oh, and I usually have some cheese just because I like cheese. <laughs> and that's like a, a typical meal. Nothing too much. How many diamond push-ups do you think you're going to be able to get? Uh, we, I don't want to say because it might be five, but we'll see. My chest is kind of pumped, so if I could push and like get the contraction going, we'll see. I got like... It's like a uniboob going right now. <laughs> oh man. The best part is I got like big bear paw hands. So making a dime is easy. Oh yeah. Oh, we're good. All we're really focusing on is squeezing our pecs to push us up. Not trying to work our triceps too much. Oh man. Whew. Not too many. I don't want to get stuck on the ground, it's embarrassing. Because then how do you get yourself up? What is your absolute favorite supplement by Muscle Tech? And do you have any that you dislike, not brand wise, but just a supplement that's kind of overhyped? Um, my favorite supplement by Muscle Tech is just actually the core Muscle Tech, uh, Nitro Tech, just because it has creatine in it as well. So I don't have to supplement with extra creatine. And I think an overhyped product. Um, Hmm, that's actually a great question. Actually, I'm not a big fan of protein bars. I think they're kind of overhyped. I'd rather have a Snickers bar and drink a protein shake. If somebody's not seeing any progress on growing their chest, do you have any tips? Yes. Um, if you're not seeing any progress in your chest, that's either means you're not getting a good enough stretch. So I would try to do more cable motions instead of pushing motions just because you're probably using more shoulders and triceps. So using more flies, incorporating your uh, chest workout, pre-exhaust with something kind of like crossover cables or cannonball sets is always great because it'll put more blood into your chest. And then following chest with, um, like doing blood flow on arms the day before, and then doing chest the next day will actually pull more blood into your chest. People are noticing your traps. How did you grow your traps? Oh, that's a great question. Cause I don't do traps. Um, it's actually cause I shaved my beard so you can see the rest of my face right now. So actually the shirt's actually probably too tight cause I think it's like a large. 
So that's probably what it really is. I'm wearing like a baby gap shirt. So <laughs> it looks like I have big traps. Um, probably just from deadlifts. I do a lot of deadlifts, a lot of partial deadlifts like rack pulls. So when you do the recumbent roll and you're kind of just rolling your back, that right there sets your traps up. Um, oh, upright rolls. I love upright rolls. So that does trap as well. I can upright roll 315 now. Yeah, you guys got it on Bruce Strength. I did it with 300, and then I got all the way up to 315 now. I've been working. <laughs> Ooh, you can keep going. Push-ups aren't bad. Oh, yeah. Squeeze the titties. Squeeze your titties. If you could have a food challenge with any person in the industry, who would it be? Oh, um, a food challenge with anybody? Ooh, that's a great question. I don't know if anybody can. Furious Pete. Yes. That's one man that might be able to out eat me. That would be fun. Are you going to any expos in the future where people can meet you? The Olympia. Um, I'll be there with Muscle Tech at their booth. But guess what? I'm not taking a lunch break because instead of eating, I'm going to the bodybone.com booth. Oh no, we're taking away from your food. I, I eat enough, it'll be fine. I can miss an hour of eating. I like hanging out with you guys. Plus, I will be giving out stuff randomly, so if you see me and you're wearing bodybuilding.com gear, I got you with some muscle tech supplements. But if you try to rob me, it will be a problem. <laughs> what is your least favorite body part to train? My grip, I hate doing forearm work. I think it's boring, so yeah, don't work my grip. So, that about it? Any more questions? You guys got like 15 seconds? Anything, anything? Where can they find you on social? Oh, you guys can find me at Lawrence Ballinger on Instagram, Snapchat. I don't do Twitter because that's too much typing and replying, not gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> catch me on YouTube. But besides that, this was a blast, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, once again, my name's Lawrence Ballinger, teambodybuilding.com and Team Muscle Tech Athlete. I'm out. Hello, my strong, strong friends, and welcome to my eight-week strength and muscle building program, Uplifted. This program is made to help you grow. Let's get lifting and get uplifted. Gentlemen, when you think of an alpha male, you probably think of a dude who's big and strong. But in my opinion, a true alpha male is someone who also has the perfect balance of style and substance. Welcome to my 30-day ab program. There are a lot of familiar movements, but there are plenty of others that you probably haven't seen before. You now have everything you need to build that six-pack you always wanted. Foundations of Fitness Nutrition is designed to be a comprehensive and applicable guide to help everyone make more educated choices about the food they eat. 